This is Hiroja Shai with the Toshi Treasure Hunters, and this is your hunt update for the week of, as of recording, June 18. Uh, some activity has happened with the game itself, some uh, keys have been solved, and I wouldn't say much of a knuffle, but I would say some people have, once again have a bit of mixed feelings concerning the recent release key. So let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see um, on the main website, you have the clan key has been found, the room key has been found, and we are currently working on the cult key and the abund and earth key are still haven't yet been solved along with the business key and the art tour key, the first, you know, art centered key has not been found as well. So uh, let's get into a little bit about the cult key. So what you had to do was basically, so as you can see in the main site, you have the fallen keys found, you know, the first three right off the bat, the pawn, the hunted key, which you had the two other agents keys returned, the, uh, the earth key, which is still not solved, the obon key, and then what's not listed here is the, the business key and the art tour key are still unknown. The Aesop key, the clan key, which we'll talk about in a second, the room key has been found, and it's, it's still possible for people to find that key till about July 7th, I believe is when the exhibit, the art exhibit closes. And then we have currently going on, which is the cult key, which is another um, marketing key, if you will. Um, and if you sign up with your number, just kind of look up here, what it looks like. As I talked about in the uh, <clears throat> clue day about how you can use a burner number or a VOP number if you want to be able to sign up and protect your privacy, um, you have what is essentially right here you get a QR code and I'll have a, a link in the show notes to this where you can go under somebody's um, QR code, earn some points. And right now we have uh, some leaderboards. So we have Zero Wing, Drew Taylor, uh, the Toshashi, Toshashi Ciphers, which is a clan, uh, Katie, Nikki, and Paul Lag are people with some points. We talked about how it's possible, you know, to possibly spam the network to get uh, the points and see, you know, what this unique artifact of the key is. It goes all the way till the end of the month and then I suppose it resets. Uh, it's, kind of, it's trying to get people to invite other people into the game. It's kind of multi-level marketing in a sense. So it's, it's a little weird. And so people are fiddling around trying to spam the network or using their clan and just, you know, Hey, here's the clan link. Uh, use whatever number you feel comfortable with. And so we can see, we can try to get some points here. As you can see over here, there isn't exactly, I'm not sure how the point system here, first, second, third tier is going. But obviously over here, you see like, they obviously are getting people's numbers under here somehow, whether it's through spamming with VOP numbers or actually having actual numbers sign up under their, their clan. And uh, speaking of Sasashi ciphers, so you had it announced that pending verification um, by the game makers themselves on June fifteenth, that the cipher Toshi on their website uh, or their, their Twitter uh, appears to be the winner, and Toshi ciphers himself have stated that they won the clan challenge, uh, verifying all chains now. Um, they have stated that, um, eventually they, they, they've typically have been releasing keys when they have found or solved them. So I'm assuming, um, as things get okay, if you will, I think they will eventually release whatever this unique key is for the clan key. And if you look at just at, at the hashtag of the clan chain, there was like a lot of different types of participants doing it different ways. Um, congratulations to the Toshi Cypher clan for being the winners. Um, some weird stuff on here. People are trying, like the Steam clan 
and it was just interesting to see the different ways people were trying to make this happen using as you can see here using tv sets uh phones going to different places um it is what it is i don't think it got as big as maybe the game makers were hoping it was going to be but it was still fascinating to see how the different clans organized and were unable to um, do this particular task. And just for some clarity on the different keys that are out there, once again, just, just Wang on Twitter and then in the unofficial Telegram uh, channel stated that the, the first key was the J key, uh, the Bismus key, um, the memory key, the Lopong key, the Hunter key, the art key, and then key 7 is the discard key, 8 and 9. 8 is Earth, 9 is Aesop, a bone key is 10, the room key is 11, the clan key is 12, and the cult key is 13. And the art key, I missed that somehow, is number 6. So there's a total of 13 keys out there. Granted, the hunted key added extra 2 keys to it, so there was potentially up to 15 keys available for people to win which prompted people to, you know, message Eric and say, you know, eight keys solved for two months, the game will drag on for 10 years. And Eric Meltzer responded saying that uh, clues will speed up a lot soon. So there's that. Um, I hope so. I hope that the clues will speed up a lot sooner than they have been. Um, especially they have different types of tasks going on, whether it's like, going to a geolocation, like the room key, uh, somewhere out there, and then solving a puzzle key, and then maybe doing like an activity. They did say they're gonna do some kind of feats, so like something similar to the hunter key where you have to get an object and give it to a person and have them simultaneously going on at the same time. I think it'll allow for a divergence of thought, a divergence of activity, and it'll, it will get people more excited about playing the game because they can play to their strengths and you can see which clans are, you know, better organized or suited for the different types of tasks that are being played. Uh, so far, the room key has not been shared with anyone. So obviously there's some secret clans out there or individual hunters that are holding on to it. And also explains just, you know, the depth and the broadness of the networks that are out there of different people that are able to reach out and say, hey, is anyone in Shanghai? Can you go to this location? and be able to obtain the the key if you will <clears throat> i also want to do a shout out to the youtube channel um arms armchair adventures uh he did a breakdown about the different kind of levels of quality of the different puzzles it was something i asked him you know as someone who has experience playing these games what he thought the different grade of level like easy hard medium and for the most part, from his experience, most of these keys have been kind of in the medium level as far as solutions go. Um, I have a link in the show notes to his channel. It's one of the channels that are talking about this game. He shouted me out, so I'm just doing a, another shout out. And I also have a link to the Pacific video at the end of this video. Uh, but it's fascinating, and he explained, you know, how people are solving stuff and how to, you know, how to think and what his grading scale for the purpose of this particular um, hunt, if you will. And not to harp on it too much, um, I understand why the game makers are doing what they're doing. You know, this is a, you know, a business for them. They're trying to broaden the scope of the people engaging with the game. So there is a bit of a marketing going on. Um, this is definitely another marketing key. I, I find it strange or a little weird that they're doing almost kind of two back in a back back to back i would think they would want to wait and gauge you know how their audience their gaming audience if you will their customers or their players kind of responded before rolling out the next one but supposedly there's supposed to be an app coming out so maybe they needed some more data points or an understanding of what who's out in the community so that's why they rolled out another kind of marketing geared um key if you will or clue it just made me think of like all the different types of products out there that people um, are looking to seek and gain um, adoption you know airlines automobiles telephone electricity um, from this little 
scale here, you know, Pokemon Go, I, I played that when I came out. Um, 19 days to get 50 million users. Um, Bitcoin is having the same thing. I think Pornhub, I think it was like nine days to get 50 million users. I think I've seen a graph of that. You know, porn's always big. Uh, YouTube, four years. Uh, seven years for the internet. So I can understand their attempt to kind of push and trying to gain some kind of following to get more people involved, to get more pe- more activities, to get more people out there. Uh, I just think maybe the quickness of their clue drops and then the nature of the puzzles, I think they need to, if they want more normative people playing the game, they're going to have to, dis- I think they're going to have to distribute it a little bit more wider. Because, um, for example, for Pokemon Go, all you had to do was have your phone, an app, which I do know that there's something they talked about that they're going to release, and you just go outside your house. In some cases, you didn't have to go outside your house. Like, the Pokemon can be in your house. Um, you didn't have to actually go places. Um, they made some adjustments to, to address that for some people. Uh, I think m- most people, when it came to, comes to ARG games, are accustomed to that, where you have to go to a location or geocache, and it makes it fun for them as far as traveling and engaging and actually maybe somewhat interacting with people in the real world. And I think they need some more of those type of puzzles because the first three were like that. And I think there was an expectation by some from the community or at least from the initial launch that it was going to be more like that. And it would be nice if there were more of those type of puzzles because I think that's what that's where the real engagement comes in. Yes, it's fun to solve these different types of puzzles and figuring them out and still trying to figure out how to work then walk. Uh, and using that type of skill set but it's also really if you want to get a broader more in-depth community something that's going to be really global i think you do need to have some of those geolocation uh puzzles so the geo um synchronize in public places maybe a time clock to get there and find the qr code and and unlock the puzzle but before we end, uh, I do want to talk about, uh, I did a little bit of a movie review for Johnny Monomic. So it was, Johnny Monomic was one of those short stories that was part of the, the second object that you had to give to Field Agent 2, called, and it's from the short stories collection called Burning Chrome. Um, I, had to do, I had done a review of it. Uh, there'll be a link at the end of the video um, concerning that. Uh Basically, I, there was like three movies um, that have been filmed. Uh, William Gibson hasn't had their best run of luck when it comes to adaptions of his work. I will say Philip K. Dick's, Dick has had better luck, if you will, than uh, William Gibson when it comes to um, you know great sci-fi of that kind of vein writers. Uh, but Johnny Monarch, you know, Keanu Reeves is in the in the film. He has done this film he's done the matrix he's done scanner darkly uh he does like a lot of sci-fi stuff and you know replicant is another sci-fi film um he's going to be a character called johnny silverhand um in cyberpunk 2077 so i remember seeing this film way back in the day i don't think i actually saw it in movie theaters i think i saw it like through blockbuster or something like that i know i'm very much dating myself but I rewatched it recently, and it's still still horrible. <laughs> it's still very much a horrible film. Um, it does have those cyberpunk elements. It was made in 1994, so the so it was a mixture of CGI and uh, or computer graphic effects and some practical stuff. It was very cheesy. It was very low budget. It was made with like 19 million dollars. And you can't make a cyberpunk movie unless you're going to really do it right. Like something like, I don't know, uh, Stranger Days. Uh, there was this one weird Jude Law movie that was very cyberpunky ish that you could kind of get away with. Um, the effects elements, because it's a very heavy story. There was really no story. They took the bare bones of it. They didn't even really have all the same characters besides um, Keanu Reeves' character. Uh, they added elements. It... it they tried to be weird, but it wasn't really weird, and it was just very sad. I, I would love to see either a William Gibson, like, story anthology, like a Netflix-type show, or 
even really a reboot of this. I, I think they, they could do the sprawl. And I saw a rumor that there was a possible, in an EC this all the time with films, a uh, possible adaptation of the Necromancer book with Simon Koberger, the guy that ruined the X-Men movies. And I'm hoping that's not true. But considering that there's been a kind of influx and in some kind of cyberpunky stuff going on, both on television and movies, and with the hype surrounding Cyberpunk uh, 2077, I would imagine that, that this this property might get picked up again. I know, once again, Snow Crash is one of those films that's been always in development hell. I would love to see an adaptation of that. I honestly think it'd probably best be suited for a Netflix series than an actual film but but that's one of my favorite books honestly and i will uh, take what i can with that one and hope for the best because there, there's so many elements in there i just i kind of want to see it on film i think it's important to be able to see it on film um but with this film it was man it's on crackle and it's on pluto tv so you can see it with ads for free this film is not even like one of those like campy, it's so bad, it's good films. Um, and I don't think it's any of the actors fault in it. I mean, it had Ice-T, he was all right. It had Henry Rollins, he's playing Henry Rollins basically. Um, you know, it had Keanu Reeves. It was just a terrible strict script, terrible writing. It didn't have the right budget. Um, not even really sure why Keanu Reeves did this film. He's coming off of speed and stuff. So I don't know what the commitment stuff is. And I looked at the history and Val Kilmer was supposed to originally be in the film. But he went and did Batman Forever. Uh, which wasn't really a bad call for him. Um, but yeah, this this is just a, it's just a terrible film. Um, but it's a, it's a good short story. So I highly recommend finding it on you know, finding a copy of Burning Chrome and reading it. Um, I'm just about finished with the Sprawl, and I will do my review of that particular trilogy and, and try to give some insight if I think there's any real insight about, you know, the game mechanics or any insight that might potentially come from reading those books. But overall, you know, I would pass on Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, there were two other adaptions to films from William Gibson stuff that I also watched, but they're not even worth reviewing because they were, again, just also as terrible. So you might as well skip that. Um, but hopefully, you know, maybe sometime soon, there will be a good adaption of a William Gibson um, story um, to the films. I do know that there are some video games out there. There's a John Johnny Mnemonic video game as well as a Necromancer video game, and I will look into those as well as time regresses in between the different clues, uh, the walls and different clues. But for now, you know, sorry Keanu, you, you can't save all the films. So that's it for um, this episode of the update, you know, just to clue you in, the cult key is going on. So I would check with your clan members, I would check with your clan group and see who has the code to sign up under using whatever burner number, whatever it is that's out there and try to garner some points and see what, you know, the end of the month brings as far as unique, the unique key for this month is. Uh, the uh, cult key, uh, Oh, not the cult key. The clan key has been won. It was won by this the Toshi Cipher group. Um, congratulations to that group for having the most successful uh, blocks out there. Uh, the room key has been found, but you still have the opportunity to find it for yourself um, at the art exhibit all the way to July 7th. So if you know somebody in, in Shanghai, China, or in China and can swing out that way, see if they can get out there for you um, um, by July 7th. Uh, the Yabon key and the Earth key has still have not been solved. The business key is still ongoing. And the Art Tour key is also has been solved. So there is a total of thus far the Art Tour key, the business card key, the Yabon key, the Earth key, and currently right now as we scan the Cult key, five keys that have not yet been solved that have been, not, that have been released. So this is where we just shot. Uh, with Toshi Treasure Hunter with the